the Atlanta Braves need to add more velocity to their bullpen. Let's talk about it. Yes, welcome on in to Braves Today, your home of news, notes, and updates for your Atlanta Braves. I'm your host, Lindsey Crosby. You can follow me on Twitter at Crosby Baseball. You can follow the show on Twitter at Braves underscore today. We have a Facebook page and an Instagram too. And you can find all of my written work, bravestoday.com. That's the Braves Today substack. And we've I, since this offseason ended early, because we all were hoping we would go deeper in the postseason than we did, especially when the season started. We expected this to be a World Series run or something close to that. I've been trying to take the show into the direction of, let's talk about what Atlanta needs to work on over the offseason. Some of these needs are big, right? You got to figure out left field. You ideally need to upgrade a shortstop, okay? yeah, The rotation, a lefty in the bullpen, things like that. But we're trying to cover every possible aspect. How do you get Sean Murphy going next year? And then... Can you integrate Drake Baldwin? Do you need to trade Ozuna or Soler? Yesterday, we talked about middle infield upgrades. Like, we're trying to take every possible route of improving this roster for 2025. And uh, shout out to the great Wiley Ballard of the Atlanta Braves Radio Network. We saw him some on the, the broadcast early in the year as a sideline reporter for the idea for this episode. Because I want to talk about bull, the bullpen and specifically the lack of velocity in the bullpen. Okay. I don't know if everybody realizes this. And again, credit to Wiley for pointing this out. The Atlanta Braves bullpen is one of the softest throwing bullpens in baseball. It's been that way for a while. This was an issue last year too. But this year, and to to get all of these stats, all of these stats come from StatCast. I hopped into StatCast and I pulled up every single pitch. This is in the search function. Every single pitch thrown by a relief pitcher or a player in a relief role, excluding position players, in 2024. I looked at all fastballs, so not just four seamers, but also two seamers and sinkers, also cutters, and sorted this by team and by average fastball velocity, okay? So all of these stats in here, just about every single stat in the show, comes from StatCast. The Atlanta Braves bullpen average fastball velocity this year was 93 miles an hour. That is 27th in baseball. Okay? So one of the worst, there's 30 teams, one of the worst marks in baseball. And two things can be true at once, right? Atlanta's pitching staff as a whole was one of, if not the best pitching staffs in baseball this year. From an ERA perspective, from a runs allowed perspective, all of that stuff, it is... It was one of the best pitching staffs in baseball this year. But it wasn't because of the fastballs of the bullpen. And when you look at who were considered some of the better bullpens in baseball, they're all conveniently right near the top, right? Number one bullpen in average fastball velocity, San Diego Padres. 95.6 miles an hour. So rounds up to 96, right? Philadelphia Phillies. Always, they gave Atlanta fits in the 23 postseason with their velo out of the pen. They did it in 22 as well. 95.1 miles an hour in velocity. They're second. Fourth, Cleveland Guardians. 94.7 miles an hour. And that is with a closer that primarily throws a cutter as his number one pitch, which is a fastball that traditionally is not as hard as a four-seam fastball. Now, it helps that Emmanuel Classe throws at 100 miles an hour. But as a whole, that was one of the best bullpens in baseball this year. I believe it had the lowest ERA and their average fastball velocity, 94.7. And we know that throwing fastball, that the harder you throw a fastball, the better it performs. Spencer Strider's talked about this, right? He's, I would rather throw 97 down the heart of the plate than 91 on the, on the black. And he's right. The stats bear out that 97 mile an hour pitch 98 mile an hour pitch will be hit less and less hard when it's dead in the center of the plate than the pitch on the edge. But I wanted numbers. I do numbers on this show. I wanted numbers, okay? 
So again, I went back into StatCast and I pulled the league-wide batting average per fastball velocity, okay? Average fastball velocity of 93. The league's batting average on fastballs 93 or softer, 259, okay? That's right there where Atlanta was. Atlanta was a 260 batting average on their fastballs this year. All of their fastballs were on 260. If you up that to 96 miles an hour, which is when you round San Diego, which is where they are, that batting average drops from 259 to 237. And then when you look at harder fastballs, so you know you get your flamethrowers and things like that in there, a fastball of 99 miles an hour or harder has a batting average allowed of 213. 100 miles an hour, it's 210. In the entire stat or pitch tracking era, so since 2008, there have been a grand total of 85 home runs hit on pitches 100 miles an hour or harder. 100 mi- 101 miles an hour or harder, there's been 22. 102 miles an hour or harder, there's been exactly eight. And one pitch in pitch tracking history of 103 miles an hour has been hit for a home run. I'm not saying you got to go find a dude that throws 103. They're, they don't grow on trees, right? They are hard to find. But what I'm saying is... The harder you throw your fastball, the less likely it is to get hit and to get hit hard. Atlanta does not throw fastballs very hard. Again, 93 miles an hour, 27th in baseball. They allow a batting average of 260 off of their fastballs in in 2024. The league average was about 255. That wasn't obviously very good. Now, I do think the Braves have done some stuff to mitigate this somewhat. The Atlanta Braves bullpen staff, as a whole in 2024, as a percentage of usage, so not raw numbers, but a percentage of usage, threw less fastballs than anybody else in the league. Okay? 30th at 18.5% of bullpen pitches thrown. And when I first pulled that up, I thought it was a mistake. I had to double check this. The Braves relievers through 23,133 pitches, 4,269 of them were fastballs. 18.5%. I thought it was a mistake. I had to double check it. I got a friend of mine who's also a baseball number nerd person to look and confirm I had that right. When you look at playoff teams, Atlanta's 260 batting average allowed off of bullpen heaters, third highest, right? And it really feels like this is an opportunity for a pin that was good as a whole on the aggregate. Braves relievers had a 332 ERA. They were 33 and 27. They allowed like 57 home runs and 500 and almost 40 innings. It feels like this is an opportunity for the Braves bullpen to get better because not a lot of high velocity in the pin. The guys who have it aren't using a lot of it with one notable glaring issue there. And then some of the guys who weren't throwing it very hard are not going to be there next year, okay? Audio folks, I apologize. I'm going to talk about all these things, but it's going to be hard to see. I have a chart real quick. Again, this came out of StatCast. And this chart is every relief fastball thrown in 2024 by a member of the Atlanta Braves sorted by pitch, by average fastball velocity. That's why Ronaldo Lopez is in here, because he threw, he had one relief outing. He threw nine fastballs. That's why he's in here. You have four guys who you feel really good about as being part of your bullpen next year that have good fastball velocity. Okay, Dezebel Hernandez, ninety-seven point four mile an hour average fastball velocity. He throws it 45% of the, or he threw it 45% of the time last year, and he allowed a batting average of 192 on it. Okay. We talked about this in a different show. He's going to be in the bullpen next year. You trust him now. You used him in the postseason. You used him down the stretch. He's in the bullpen next year. Okay. Rizel Iglesias, your closer, 48.6% fastball usage, averages 95.5 on it, allowed a batting average of 168. You like that. You're going to have him in there. Again, next year, final year of his deal. We'll get to that a little bit later in the show. Looking on the list, though, Ray Kerr 
had the, I'm going to say third highest, because again, I'm taking out Ronaldo Lopez. He only threw nine relief fastballs. 95.1 mile an hour at fastball velocity. It didn't perform very well. 351 average. He's also not going to be available next year because he had Tommy John. Grant Holmes, same thing. I'm taking him out because he's going to be a starter next year. But Pierce Johnson, this is the big one for me, right? This is the one we've got to figure out. Pierce Johnson, average fastball velocity of 94.9. He allows a 179 batting average on the pitch, but he almost never throws it. 28.4% fastball usage because he is a curveball guy. And honestly, I if you follow me on Twitter during some of these games, I would talk about this. Pierce Johnson sometimes would just spam curveballs over and over and over again. I saw outings where he threw seven consecutive curveballs before he did break it up with a fastball. Some of those fastballs are he would throw three or four to one guy and then he'd just go back to spamming curveballs against guys. Everybody else on this list is either not a guarantee to be here next year, didn't even throw 125 fastballs, or was below 93 miles an hour, right? Jesse Chavez averaged 89.5 miles an hour on his fastballs because he, that's going to be, that was a cutter, right? He's retiring. He's not part of this pin next year. Darius Vines is probably, is not on the 40-man roster right now. Probably won't be. Jimmy Herget was claimed off of waivers. Don't get me started on that. I'm really frustrated with how that went down. But Jackson Stevens, average 92.1. He's probably not going to be on there, right? Parker Dunshee, not going to be on there. John Brebbia may be back. He averaged 93.5. Uh, Tyler Matzik, we're hoping he is back into normal form next year. He averaged only 93.5, but he's been higher than that in his career. Remember, he was coming back from Tommy John. Luke Jackson is, I'm guessing, not going to get his contract picked up, but they may try to re-sign him to a cheap deal. I believe he lives in Atlanta and he likes Atlanta, so he maybe he comes back cheaper. He averaged 94.4, but allowed a 250 batting average on it as a member of the Braves. So you've got four guys that give you average fastballs of 94 miles an hour or harder, because Joe, Joe Jimenez is that fourth guy. I think I mentioned him. What I am wanting to do here, what I'm looking for, is to see if the Braves can add some options of higher fastball velocity, I think you'll naturally get a little bit of an uptick simply because you're no longer going to have Jesse Chavez bringing that down. One of the issues there is nobody threw more fastballs out of your bullpen than Jesse Chavez. He threw 814 of them. And again, the average was below 90 miles an hour because one, he's 40 years old, and two, he's throwing a cutter. Aaron Bummer, 92.7 miles an hour. He was your second most commonly used fastball. He's throwing a sinker. He's getting ground balls, an outside situation. After that, Joe Jimenez, Rizal Iglesias, they're up there. Their velocity was good. AJ Minters traditionally had good velocity. Didn't this year with the hip injury. It dropped. We'll get to him in the next segment. And again, we're going to talk about some ways to fix this. And then I think you also need to maybe look at life after Rizal Iglesias. We'll do that next. But first, today's episode is brought to you by our friends at Encase Cards. This is a custom card manufacturer. They take your source photos of your youth sports participants and get their artists to personalize it for your child. They add a background. They add the player stats, whether it's height, hometown, age, position, whatever it might be. They then print it on high-quality cardstock, slab it, and ship it to you to be used as a keepsake. My two kids play youth sports. My daughter plays soccer. Also in the postseason right now, if they win on Friday, they go to the championship next week and for U10 here in town. So very excited about that. Uh, my son plays T-ball. Uh, so we have cards coming for both of them, customized, again, slabbed. It is the, our kids' sports picture with the background, with all of their relevant stats, their little write-up and everything like that. So go check this out. It's really cool. Incasecards.com. That's N-C-A-S-E cards.com. Welcome back into Braves today. Lindsey Crosby uh, talking about the need for velocity in the bullpen. There's a couple ways to get this done. And I think it depends on a little bit of growth or I guess growth, a little bit of a resurgence from some of your guys who underperformed this year, 
you can do free agency and you can make some trades. I don't really have the trade stuff in here. There's way too many relievers in the league to try to identify some great trade targets. But I'll point out, Atlanta's been pretty good at getting relievers via trade. Joe Jimenez was a trade acquisition from the Tigers to cost them Justin Henry Malloy. Pierce Johnson was a trade acquisition from the Rockies. I honestly forget what we gave them. It wasn't anything significant. Rizel Iglesias was a trade acquisition. We gave them Jesse Chavez and I think Tucker Davidson or Sean Newcomb, one of those two. And Chavez was back within three weeks. Okay. Luke Jackson was a trade acquisition. We gave him Tyler Matzik. Matzik was back within a few weeks. So I don't really cover the trade acquisitions in here. Atlanta's been really good. Aaron Bummer, also a trade acquisition. Atlanta's been really good at finding guys who underperformed in their current homes, getting them here, making some tweaks to what they do, putting a better team around them, and seeing them produce better. I don't really have that in here, but I did go through free agent listings, average fastball velocities and stat cast, and things like that to try to make a list, depending on how much money you want to spend, of some both righties and lefties who can improve your bullpen, improve your average fastball velocity, and just give you another swing and miss threat out of the pen. And the reason why I'm not necessarily ruling out a signing here is because Atlanta's been willing to spend on the bullpen. In 2024, um, on the cap figure, Atlanta had the most expensive bullpen in baseball at $45.98 million. They barely edged out Philly at 45.97, and I believe Philly's calculation is with an adjustment to put uh, Taiwan Walker and his $18 million salary in the bullpen, right? Arizona's up there at 5th at 34.89. I think that's with Jordan Montgomery's money in the bullpen. So just straight bullpens. You have bullpens that either have a failed starter who costs a lot of money in Philly and Arizona, or you have bullpens that have one $100 million man. Number three is the Houston Astros at 39.37. Number four is the Mets, 39.03. It's Josh Hader and Edwin Diaz pulling that whole thing up. Atlanta's been willing to spend on a bullpen without having one dude taking a ton of money because they spread it around everybody. When you look at the Braves relievers this year and what they made, Iglesias is making $16 million. In, correction, this 2025. 2024, you have Jimenez making $8 million, Iglesias at 16, Pierce Johnson at 7, Aaron Bomber at 6.5. You're willing to spend money on three or four or sometimes even five relievers with money on their deals. If you wanted to spend money and specifically want to get your fastball velocity improved, I got a couple targets for both righties and lefties. For righties, I'm thinking about, and again, this is not necessarily who I want. This is just free agents with good fastball velocity. Sir Anthony Dominguez of the Baltimore Orioles. 97.8 mile an hour fastball velocity, 96 percentile for all pitchers, not just relievers, all pitchers. Allowed a 222 batting average on that heater in 2024. 218 expected, so slightly unlucky but pretty much within the margin of error. I would argue that he was, his locations were really the big issue. The Orioles have an $8 million club option on him with a $500,000 buyout. I don't know if they'll pick it up or not. I do particularly think the Orioles are cheap and are not willing to spend the money they want. They just gave Kim Roll that money last, and it did not work out. They DFA'd him before the season was over. So that makes me think that was the only time they were willing to spend money. It didn't work out. They're never going to do it again, right? I don't think they're going to bring him back for $8 million. They may. He may be an option. Carlos Estevez of the Phillies. 96.8 mile an hour fastball velocity. 89th percentile. Allowed a batting average of 198 in 2024 on that heater. Expected batting average of 240. So a little bit of overperformance of the inputs there. Uh, Clay Holmes of the Yankees. I made I laughed at Christian last week when he suggested Clay Holmes because of all the blown saves and things like that. But as a as a leverage guy, I don't think he would be a terrible choice. Uh, it's a sinker, ninety six point six miles an hour on a sinker, very good velocity, eightieth percentile among all pitchers. And again, it's a sinker. They typically are a little bit softer than a four seam fastball. He allowed a three seventeen average on it last year. 
The expected was 281, and I think a lot of this was the Yankees' defense being bad. 64.6 percentile literally led all pitchers in baseball in ground balls. Clay Holmes is a higher velocity right-handed version of Aaron Bummer. And the the big rant that I had about Aaron Bummer, uh, I did it on back on the old Athlon site. I wrote it up for SI when I was with them. It's going to be on the Substack probably sometime soon is Aaron Bummer's good at what he does, which is getting ground balls. Atlanta's defense failed him a little bit since he's been here. Clay Holmes is that, but even worse, right? The Yankees defense has been even worse on that than they should be. A sleeper and a guy I actually do want to pound the table for a little bit here, I think would be good. Um, Jose LeClerc of the Texas Rangers, okay? Zell Iglesias is a free agent after this year. He'll be entering, I believe, his age 36 season. And I'm not saying that he is bad or that you can't, um, that you can't re-sign him, you can't trust him or anything like that. But I am saying that he will, we don't know what he's going to cost. He was one of the best relievers in baseball last year, okay? We don't know what he will cost and what he will look like after his age 35 season. Atlanta had, feels like it was pretty good at getting Rizal Iglesias to be the future closer in that 2021 deadline deal and letting Will Smith walk. And arguably it worked out, right? Iglesias has been a great closer since he's been here. If you want to do that same thing, you can get Jose LeClerc, I think, in free agency this year. Spot track predicts him for two years and $9.2 million, which is a $4.6 million per year. I'd be willing to give him six on a three-year deal, right? Fastball velocity of 95.3 miles an hour. 70th percentile allowed only a 176 batting average last year. A 202 expected batting average. So a little bit of, under, of overperformance on the inputs. But... I do think there's some things to like. Atlanta likes having that former closer. Think about Kirby Yates in 23, right? When your high leverage guys had all been used, you needed somebody to to get the save, they would throw Kirby Yates out there to get the save. You did not have that in 2024. You tried guys. You tried Jimenez. He blew a couple. You tried Mentor. He blew a couple. You didn't have that former closer. Jose LeClerc has 41 career saves. He can be that former closer for you in 2025. He also throws multiple fastballs. People who listen to this show know I'm a big fan of a dude. He can throw more than one fastball. He throws a four-seamer and a cutter and a sinker. He also has a slider, also has a changeup. It's a five-pitch mix, which is very rare to see from a reliever, never mind a closer. But I like the flexibility that gives you to get things done. Again, I think it could he could be a little bit cheaper. And I think you can see some improvements with a year of health, workload, wherever it may have been. Back in 2022, his fastball sat 96.5 miles an hour. He's lost over a full mile an hour on the fastball in the last two seasons. I don't know if that's workload or what that might be, if it's injury. Uh, He did have a lot of appearances in 2023, including a World Series run where he pitched a lot in the postseason. Uh, I don't know. I don't know exactly what it was. I think he had over 70 appearances. So workload's been up. Maybe this is something he can come in a little bit of a lower leverage thing. He's in. He's a setup man versus a closer. And then he can step into your closing role in 2026. I think he's a great buy low and you can get him for cheap. When you look at lefties with hard fastballs, because we talked about last week, you got to find another lefty for the pin. Dylan Lee and uh, Aaron Bummer will be the only ones you're guaranteed to have next year. Again, assuming they pick up the Bummer option, which they indicated in that postseason press conference that they would. They also indicated there were no expected coaching changes coming. So things can change. Um, if you want a hard fastball and you from a lefty pitcher, literally a oldest Chapman is out there. I'm not saying the Braves should sign your oldest Chapman. He's got, there's been lots of questions about character fit and clubhouse and all of that kind of stuff with him. But literally, no one in the pitch tracking era has thrown more 100 plus mile an hour pitches than a oldest Chapman. Okay. Since 2008, he has 3,785 fastballs of 100 miles an hour or over. The next closest pitcher is Jordan Hicks 
at less than half of that, 1,588. If you're looking for lefty gas, there literally is nobody better than Aroldis Chapman at providing lefty gas in modern baseball, okay? He signed, he, he's with the Pirates most recently. It's been a lot of one-year deals here, right? Maybe if you're not concerned about the clubhouse stuff, because again, that is a thing, maybe you bring in Aroldis Chapman. Tanner Scott was with the Marlins, traded to the Padres. Tanner Scott is a free agent. He's probably one of the premier relievers available on the market. So the cost is probably going to be a little bit up there if you want him. Averaged 97 miles an hour on his fastball, 91st percentile. Allowed a 134 batting average on it. Now, it was a platform year. He overperformed. The expected was 187. But Tanner Scott is a lefty fireballer as well. So there's something there. And then again, you have some internal options on this. You have Angel Perdomo in your system. He was averaging almost 95 miles an hour on his fastball when he was healthy. Before he went down with Tommy John, he's expected back at some point in time next year. Side note, I thought he'd throw harder. 6'8", 265, you'd think the dude would throw harder than 95. He's got a lot of mass behind him, but whatever. You'll have a lefty option at some point in time next season. You could always try re-signing A.J. Minter, assuming that the injury is going to bring down his, his cost a little bit. His numbers were down this year because of the hip, but in 2023, he was healthy. 95.8 miles an hour on the fastball, 80th percentile from all pitchers in baseball, allowed a 211 average on an expected of 223. It's not out of the realm of possibility to think that a healthy AJ Minter can get you back to where you know, like to some of those career numbers. Uh, he did just change agents. It's entirely possible that he wants. Um, he's looking for a, a better deal than he thought his old agent could get. I don't know what the cost will be. I'm not saying that that AJ Minter will be cheap or that he will be or that he's definitely coming back, right? But it's an option. Another internal way to fix this, if he can get back to his previous form after Tommy John, is Tyler Matzik. He had a again a rough year this year. We traded, he was throwing 90, his, his fastball averaged 93.6, right? We traded him away in the Jorge Soler deal. They cut him, Giants cut him, he came back. In 2021, though, before in his arguably the best season of his career, his fastball was one of the best in baseball from a bullpen. Four, plus 14 run value, he averaged 96 miles an hour on it which was 86 percentile. And I believe yesterday was the anniversary of him just destroying the Dodgers in the NLCS. Again, Tyler Matzik is a hero in Atlanta. He will all, he should always drink for free in Atlanta. He did come back to the organization and sign a minor league deal. And as I understand, he lives in Atlanta in the offseason. Assuming he's back next year, which you technically have to sign him to a new deal because he becomes a free agent when the season ends, when the World Series is over. If Tyler Matzik can regain that previous form, there's another lefty option that can help your fastball velocity. But again, you've got to get him back to that previous form. 2022, he averaged almost two mile an hour less on the fastball at 94.1 before he went down. And this year, he was even lower at 93.6, again, compared to 96 in 2021. So two, almost two and a half mile an hour lower this year. You have options here. You can fix your fastball velocity you can choose to do it with a lefty if you want to kill two birds, one stone. You can go get a, a, a future closer in a Jose Leclerc at what could potentially be a pretty cheap deal. You sign him for a couple years. I, a lot of people are scared of long-term deals for relievers because they're so volatile. I do think that's one you can probably try to, you have some time to get him back into that previous form before Iglesias is able to walk in free agency. If you're listening on audio, do us a favor, leave us a five-star review. If you're on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and either way, I want your questions. We're doing a mailbag show tomorrow, so send those in to us. You can email us, contact at bravestoday.com. I'm on Twitter at Crosby Baseball. Show's on Twitter at Braves underscore today. We're on Facebook and Instagram, too. Until next time, this has been Braves Today.